here. Welcome to Tuesday night. Woohoo! Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, so I haven't been on in a while because things have been crazy, but I wanted to come on and talk to you guys about detoxing your life because I promised you that I would and because I said I would, I am here. And um, I came up with this topic because so much of what I do and helping people is, is detoxing, right? Getting rid of all this garbage out of their body and you guys get sick of hearing me and seeing me post about, you know, how to eat healthy and clean out the processed foods and get rid of the stuff and the garbage and eat real and eat whole foods and all of these things and, and all of my clients and all the people in my groups, that's what it's about, right? It's about clearing us of all that gooky stuff so we can feel lighter, so we can have more energy, so we can be healthier, so we can feel vibrant. And the truth is that it's not only food that you have to detox out of your life. It's not only those toxins that we're consuming, it's toxins that are in our life, right? Toxins that are people and situations and thoughts and, and, and all of these things that are in our movies and, and things that we're listening to, these toxic things that are in our lives that are keeping us feeling heavy, that are keeping us depressed, that are giving us anxiety, that are instilling fear in us, that are instilling all of these emotions in us that we're not good enough or that we're not strong enough or that we should be fearful of this or that we can't do this or we can't do that. And so there's all of these toxins in our lives from other people and what we're seeing that that need to be cleaned out, that need to be taken out and just as much as you would with food so you can have more energy and you can feel good and you can feel vibrant. All the things that happens when you change the way that you eat, if you change your mind, the same thing happens. So I wanted to kind of talk about it, why it's important, why you need to start looking at your life and saying, what are the things in my life or who are the people in my life that are keeping me down, that are making me feel sluggish, that are making me not look forward to seeing them, that are, are what situations in my life are happening that I could change change and, and feel better about? What are, what are the things that I should probably stop reading, probably stop watching, probably stop listening to so that I can focus on more positive things? There's so many people walking around with anxiety right now, rightfully so. Media, here's fear, here's fear, here's fear, this is going on, that's going on, this is uh, all this distraction, all of these things. And so there's a lot of people that are you're walking around, they're just feeling constant anxiety and they're having these feelings like, I don't know why I'm feeling this, I don't know why I feel sad, I don't know why I feel depressed, I don't know why I'm nervous, what am I nervous about? What uh, Driving themselves crazy, right? Maybe it's you driving yourself crazy over things that are in the future, things that haven't happened yet, things that might happen, all of this. So I want to talk about detoxing some of those things in our lives so that we're able to not feel that anxiety, or at least when we feel that anxiety, we're able to control it, right? We're able to say, okay, this is happening, so let me assess it, and let me fix it, and let me get rid of the things that are no longer serving me. That is what detoxing is, getting rid of toxins. This is not serving me. It's making me worse. It's making me not feel good. This person, this situation, this food, this whatever it is that's a toxin that's coming into your mind or in your body is going to pull you down. And I don't want you to be down anymore. I want you to be up. I want you to feel alive. I want you to be healthy. I want you to feel vibrant. And there's certain things that you got to get rid of if you're going to do that. And it's not going to be about food. I promise it's not going to be about food. It should be about food because food helps, but it's not about food. I promise. So the first thing, you know, I want everyone to think about in their lives, who are the people in your life that make you feel great? right? Who, who, who make you feel alive, who add to value to your life, who are there for you, who are positive, that when you see them and you hang out with them, you feel good, you feel excited, you feel laughter, you have joy, you have all of these things. Who are those people? And who are the people where you get the opposite from? That when you're around, you feel really depressed, or you feel really agitated, or you feel really annoyed, or you feel like they pull you into drama, or you feel really judged, right? There's going to be a few different kinds of people that you have in your life. There's going to be a lot of naysayers, okay? Those are the, the first people you need to detox, and I'll sh tell you how to do that when I'm done explaining who and what these toxins are because first you gotta know what they are before you fix it, right? You gotta know what you're doing first and what the problem is before you can fix it and then it's about the solution. So I'm gonna talk about the problem first and then I'm gonna give you guys the solution. So you have these naysayers and these are the people 
usually, who haven't done much in their lives. And so when you come to them and you share with them things that you want to do or things that you want to start doing or, or ideas that you have, they're the ones who say you can't do it, there's no way, it's very difficult, it's too hard, you don't want to do that. That's the, These are the people that will shoot you down the second you bring anything new to them, the second that you have an idea, the second that you have any aliveness in you. These people are going to, no, can't do that, can't do that, that can't happen, no way, nope. And they're going to reinforce this feeling in your mind because you're already feeling insecurity and you're already feeling fears. They're just going to make that fear more real by saying, yeah, you're right, you, you can't do that. You want to cut it. Cut the cord with the naysayers, okay? And, and maybe it's your family and maybe it's somebody close who you really can't share that with and here's the solution, stop sharing it with them, right? If there's somebody that are people that you go to that when you share what you want to do with, you're, and they're like, oh, why do you want to do that for? There's no way you're not qualified for that. There's no way you could do that. Stop talking to them about anything you want to do. The second that they shut you down, and there's a difference between somebody being realistic and saying, okay, you know, this is just going to be hard for you, but then the people that are really in your corner are going to be like, it's going to be hard and it's going to be difficult. Let's figure out a way together how that's going to, how we could do this. Let's, let's, okay, yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult, but, but you can do it because you're strong, right? There's a difference between people who tell you reality followed by the fact that you can do it and people that tell you reality and want to keep you down where they are. So know those people, know those naysayers and stop talking to them. Here's your solution. Stop talking to them about anything that you want to do great in your life because they're just going to bring you down because if you succeed and you do something, that means that they had the opportunity and they didn't do it and that that's a reflection of them. Anything that anyone says to you or does to you is not a reflection of you. It is a reflection of them and their thoughts and their beliefs. So when anybody tries to throw any crap at you that you're not capable of doing something, look at that person because if that person is a successful, driven, motivated person, that person's going to stand in your corner and they're going to be like, hell yeah, you could do this. If they're a naysayer, they're going to want you to stay where they are. Misery loves company. So remember that. Cut your naysayers, detox, out, done. Second thing, your gossipers, okay? Your gossipers, these are the people that at every event, they want to talk about everybody else. They want to have a conversation about who's doing what and who do there, and they call you, did you hear what happened with this person? Did you hear what happened with that person? And if you feed into this gossip and you feed into this conversation about somebody else or other things that have nothing to do with value and you and, 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 and it's talking about other people and what other people are doing and what other people said and did, you're going to feel icky, right? Maybe not at that moment, but when you hang up, you're going to be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have said that. Why does this person talk so badly? Like there's a part in us, us that shouldn't feel that, right? That shouldn't feel that need to talk about other people or other things that are happening in other people's lives, unless it's your friends and you're talking to each other, right? So you got to stay away from these people that always want to talk about everybody else and, and what everybody else is doing, because what's the point of that? What's the point of having conversation about other people? Or you talk to one person and, and let's say you're having that conversation, and you go back and forth and that person is like, oh, this and this one did this to me and did that to me and blah, blah, blah. But you haven't heard the other side, so you have no right to give your perspective on anything until you've heard both sides. Okay, so don't get pulled into that. Don't get pulled into the toxicity of gossip because gossip is just garbage. It's just garbage. It's just perspectives from other people. It doesn't even mean anything. It's just how other people see things and you're all talking about it. It's stupid. It's dumb. Stop doing it. Stop. <laughs> just stop. You will feel better not getting caught up in that. So if you're in a situation where that's happening and other people are talking about other people, and, and yes, it's going to happen, right? You're going to talk about other people. But if it's in a negative light and it's, it's that persistency of, of talking about other people in a negative way, again, it says more about the negative, about the people than it does about the people that are being spoken about. So stop, leave, leave the conversation. Say on the phone, you know what, I really don't wanna hear about so-and-so and what's happening in their life. Like, I, you know, if they wanna tell me, they'll tell me. And that's it, and that's how I am. If, it, if people wanna tell me about it, other things happen in other people's lives, all right, you know, whatever, I listen, I'm like, all right, and I change the subject. Because unless that person's gonna tell me what's going on in their life, it's none of my damn business, right? So gossip, cut them out, done. Judgmental people, 
These are the worst. These are the people that anything and everything you do is a problem. Doesn't matter how much you try to please them, they find something to complain about. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere. What you should do, what you shouldn't do, how you should do it, how it should be done, how it shouldn't be done. Cut them. That's it. If anybody has this audacity to come to you and tell you things that you should do or you should be or how you should be based on their thoughts, based on their beliefs, based on their traditions, based on how they do things, that's none of your business, right? That's none of your business because they're living their lives based on their belief system and you're living your life based on your belief system. So if you're taking that in, if people, if you're letting what other people think about you affect how you're going into your life and you're letting these people decide for you what you should and shouldn't do, you're not living your own life. You are not living your own life. Why? Why would you live for anybody else but you? Why? You go to sleep, you have your spouse or you sleep by yourself or you sleep with your dog or whoever you sleep with, those two people in that bed and yourself that you build a life with, that's the only judgments and opinions that matter. No one else matters because everyone is judging from their place of perspective. Everybody is judging from what they believe about things. So to put that on other people is, is very toxic. For, for It's a very toxic trait for someone to say, you should be doing this and you should be doing that and you shouldn't be doing this and I don't like that she did that and he did that. Who gives a crap? If it's not hurting anybody, if it's not hurting the person that's being judgmental, what the hell is the big deal, right? If it's something good, if it's something nice. So these judgmental people, when they give you their opinion, you're like, you know, it's not right that you did this or you say, you know what, I, I respect your opinion, I respect your thought, I respect what you're saying. Um, I'm going to read, hey Sylvia, I'm going to read all the comments after, because you guys know me. That's it. I, I get into the comments and then this, this goes woo, all the way to the other place, okay? So I promise. I promise, Sylvia, I will answer. Everybody, I saw some people commenting, and I will answer. So, so that's it, right? So these judgmental people, they say these things to you and you say, you know what? I appreciate it. I appreciate your opinion. I appreciate what you're saying, what you're thinking, but that's not how I do things or that's not how I feel. And that's, I, I, I take it into consideration and then you move on. You got to detox, right? Toxic. You're toxic. You're coming to me and you're judging me based on your life and what you think. You're toxic cut it out. That's it. And I know that that can be really hard, especially with family, especially with spouses, especially with, you know, anybody in your life. And I'm not saying just cut people. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm going to get to that. You know, I do want you to have conversations with people first, and I'm going to get to that. But, but you've got to be aware. Does this make me feel good? Does this make me feel great in this presence of these people? Does this make me feel like these are people that I want to be with all, all the time? The naysayers, the gossipers, the judgmental people. No. Then you've got, and these are the worst, these are the hardest people to deal with, are the negative Nancys. And listen, everybody goes through their crap. Everybody goes through their stuff and has hard times. And, and it is okay to call a friend and just bomb it. Everything that's wrong. But if you're trying to give a solution and you're trying to gear them into a place of positivity and you're trying to move them from where they are to a better place and, 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 and help them, and they want to continue to justify where they are and stay there, you got to stop. You got to stop trying to fix them. You got to stop trying to make them see the light. You got to stop trying to be so positive because they have to come to that light on their own. And they are toxic. Even though you feel bad, even though there may be things in their lives that, that are so heavy on them that, that you feel really bad. But if they're not willing to fix that, if they're not willing to change that, right? When I get on a call, you know, with a client and it's like, we have that first call and it's like, okay, what's going on? What's going and, and I start, we start going back and forth and they're like, but, but I can't because, but I can't because, but it's really hard because I know that there's going to be a difficulty there. Because if you're not willing to change, if you're not not willing to see the problem and, and focus on the solution of that problem, then you can't move forward. So when these people call you or these people want to hang out and they only want to talk about problems and it's the same problem over and over again or it's a problem that you tell them to fix and then they still haven't listened to what you said, stop it. Stop driving yourself crazy and sit, the, sit them down and just say, until you are ready to apply 
what I'm sharing with you or and take my advice or, you know, and even advice. Advice is so perspective. Advice is so airy, dreamy because it's, it's on, it depends on the person. I could give you different advice than somebody else gives, right? So it's like, unless you got to say to this person, like, unless you're willing to change and focus on the solution, I can't help you because then what happens is you end up getting drained into that negativity. You know, no one wants to pick up the phone and be like, hey, how you doing? And it's like, oh my God, my boyfriend again, he's doing it. Like, oh, the same thing he's been doing for four years that you keep allowing to happen because you keep continuing to focus on the problem and you keep staying. Like, you got to call him out. You got to call him out and just be like, listen, I'm here to listen. I'm also here to help, but I'm not going to be your garbage can, right? And this is really hard for like empaths because we do help everybody and we do want to fix everything. So when people come to us that don't want to, it's, it's very difficult. So if you have these people in your life that are draining you like that, you, you got to cut it. You got to have that conversation. Like I'm willing to help you and I'm willing to listen, but, but there's got to be progress. There's got to be a change. You know, I've had friends in the past that just kept making the same mistake over and over and over. And it's like, what should I do, Crystal? Like, oh, uh, well, clearly what I said to you seven times ago when you did that didn't change. So stop asking me, right? Right? So do that. Look at your life. See, see, are there naysayers? Are there judgmental people? Are there negative Nancys? Are there gossipers? Because they're everywhere. They're all around and they're bringing you down. And if you let them, they will consume you. They will consume your mind. And if that happens, you're screwed because now you're living for everybody else, right? You're living for everybody else. You're letting the toxins come in you. You're hearing all this. And that's the thing. I'm not saying, like I tell people when, you know, they start their journey, like clear out your cupboards, clear out your refrigerator, like just purge, just get rid of it, stop it. Like we got to start fresh. It's hard to do that with relationships. There's going to be relationships in your life where you can't do that and you can't just cut people off. And I don't want you to cut people off, but I do want you to have the conversation with people if they've been draining you, if they've been toxic in your life and say, listen, this is how I feel. This is what I'm thinking. I want to be honest with you. I'm starting to work on my life. I want only positive people in my life. I want only people that are driven and motivated and make me feel good and serve and, 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 and we work together to get better. And that's the kind of people I want in my life and you say that to these people and like I said for each thing that they are if they're gossipers you walk away if they're naysayers you say you know that's great that you feel that way or judgmental you know that's great that you feel that way but that's not how I feel I'm still going to do what I'm going to do and you leave it there you leave it there and I promise you people will stop doing that to you because you're going to create a boundary and you're going to say I, I, I'm not going to take I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not going to take your garbage anymore. I'm not going to take your virus anymore, right? It's like a sickness. It's like the the, 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 the nitpicking and the nit, just all the crap that people do. It's like, I don't need that in my life, right? That's what you have to start walking around. You have to own it. You have to be like, listen, you are not allowed in my life unless you are bringing joy, unless you are bringing happiness. And yes, there's going to be times when you're not happy and you have an argument and you get through it. You focus on the solution. You always focus on the solution. Maybe your partner's like that. Maybe your partner's been judgmental. Maybe your partner's been a naysayer. Maybe your partner's been bringing you down. Instead of fighting about it, instead of arguing about it, sit down and have the conversation. This is how you're making me feel. This is how I'm feeling in this relationship. This is what I need to change in order to, to for us to grow because this is, this is what's happening. I'm building resentment or I'm building anger and I don't want that. I want to love you again. I want to be like we were before, right? That, that's how you get back to kindness and goodness is with you instead of always blaming the other person. So have that conversation. Have the conversation when these toxic people are around you that are, are not feeding you well and just say, you know what, I, I'm working on my life and I'm working to get into a better place and this isn't serving me right now. I don't want to have this conversation about so-and-so. I don't want to be judged about the decision I made. I don't want to be told that I can't because I know that I can, right? So, so talk to them. Let, 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 Anita, let them go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Let them go. Let it go because it's heavy. It's so heavy when you're carrying that around. You're carrying around other people's stuff. Um, so let me read a few comments. I know there were a few here. Ooh, we had a bunch of people pop on today. Quentin, hey. It's hot in here. I can't put that. You see, because then you guys can't hear me. Anita, good evening. Hello, hello. Anya. Virtual friend. Hey, Melanie. I know that's what I feel like. I feel like I've got to know so many of you so well. We create our own reality. That's it. 
Why is it so hard to put ourselves first? Ooh, such a good one. Okay. Why is it so hard to put ourselves first? Because we've, especially women, guys too, guys too, but especially women, we're born with an innate sense of nurture, right? We're, 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 we're the nurturers of the world. We're, we're feminine. We take care of it all. We, we make sure the kids are fed, the bills are paid, the husband's food is there, the house is clean, the laundry's done. I mean, we do it all because that's what's in our heart. That's what the feminine energy is. That's what being a woman is, 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 is we're here to care. We're here to caretake and, and we're damn well good at it, right? We can do everything, right? We can do everything, but because we do everything, everyone takes everything from us. So it's hard to put ourselves first because we've already established ourselves as people that everybody else can come to. We've already established ourselves as people that can juggle everything, right? We can juggle the laundry and the cleaning and the kids and the husband and the bills and the stress and we can be the rock, right? Men are the rock, but women are really the rock. Like, let's get real here. We're, we're, we're the rock. And it's because we've portrayed ourselves and we've shown ourselves to be these, these women and these people, and men do it too, that can take on everything. And so when we take on everything, guess what? Everybody wants to give it. Everyone's like, oh, you're really good at that. Here you go. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm really good at that. So I'm going to take it. And so there's value. You start to build up value. Wow, I mean something. I'm needed. Right? And there's that little part in the back of your mind that's like, oh, my God, if I, if I don't do this, maybe they'll stop loving me. If I don't do this, the house is going to fall apart. If I don't do this, then, then I'm selfish. If I don't do this, I'm selfish. Bullshit. I call bullshit because you are selfish if you are doing things just because you want to do things, right? And, and you're not putting anybody first ever and you're just all about you and nothing is about anybody else. But if you're not selfish, if you say, you know what, I'm feeling drained by everyone coming to me. I'm feeling drained by all the tasks that I have. I'm feeling drained by all the things that I'm having to do and I need to reboot myself so I can show up better for you guys. Isn't that different than I just need a break from everybody. I'm going to get a manicure and a pedicure. It's very different to sit everybody down and say, listen, guys, I know that I've taken on a lot and I know that I've been doing everything, but it's kind of weighing on me and I need your help. I need your help where I know that you can help because most, pe most of the things women do for other people, other people can do for themselves. Let's get real here, okay? We don't have to do everything. So... Speak up and say that and say, listen, I need help. Speak up and say, listen, I, I, I can't do everything. It's okay to admit that. So Sylvia, to answer your question, why is, is self-care so hard? It's because we have all these fears that if we don't, we're selfish. And if we don't, then we're not going to be loved. And if we don't, then we're not doing enough. And, and, and what are people going to say? And what are people going to think? And, and all of these things. Like, I'm not a mom yet, so I don't know. But I will damn well tell you that when I am a mom, if someone's like, I'm, you know, anytime you want me to watch the baby, I'll watch him. I'm going to take that offer because I want to work on myself so I could be a better mom, so I can be a better wife. Leaving my kid with somebody for two hours while I reset is going to serve more than it's going to hurt, right? People are like, oh, I can't do that. I got to take care of my kid. Like, okay, again, granted, I'm not a mom yet, but I also know that you're stressed as a mom. I also know that you're overworked as a mom. I also know that you're depressed sometimes as a mom. I also know that you have anxiety sometimes because you're so overwhelmed by being a mom. So doesn't it make sense to just take that time to reboot yourself in order to show up the best that you can show up? Just how? How can you give from an empty cup? I talked about this when I talked about self-care, right? How can, how can you do that? How can you give to other people if you don't have anything? It's, it's, it's impossible, okay? It's almost, nearly impossible. So anyway, so the people. So you got these toxic... See, that's why I read the comments last because I go off on a tangent. But this is what I'm saying, right? You have these people in your life. Now, the, la the next thing... Guys, the TV and the phone and the social media and the radio and like all of this noise. There's all of this noise coming in all the time. Is it helping you or is it hurting you? Is the distractions helping you or are they hurting you? TV, you're coming home, you're watching reality TV, you're watching drama, you're watching thrillers, you're watching all of these things, killing, shooting, anger, cheating, who's lying to who, who's doing this. It's like you're being programmed to, to feel, right, fear. You're being programmed to feel 
anxiety. You're feeling fear to, you know, fear, being programmed to fear all these things that, that are drawn. Like people, you know, like now I can't watch reality TV. Like it's a joke to me. It's like, I used to watch it. I'll admit it. I don't care, but I can't watch it now because it's so stupid. It's so dumb. And we all need that. We all need that little bit of like guilty pleasure, like screw it. I'm, and if you're doing it once in a while, that's fine. But if you're addicted to it, if you're watching this on a daily basis and, and all you're seeing is drama and all you're seeing is, is people fighting and anger and, and all, all of this stuff like that, you, you, take that in. Like, don't think that you don't take that in. I remember I used to love horror movies. I used to love watching horror movies. And I haven't watched a horror movie in so long because it's like, yeah, it's great to feel that fear, but like, I wouldn't be able to sleep then for like three, four days because it would be on my mind and it would be there and it would be really hard to forget what I saw and it would stick there. And it's the same thing when you're watching or listening to this like, you know, soap operas and all this stuff. Like, not, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just saying that look at what you're watching. You're watching drama. You're watching negativity you're watching who's cheating on who and who did what and who killed this person and like who came back from living and like it's just like oh i just i don't understand i don't under you know i can't sit there anymore and watch that and that's what starts to happen when you're really aware of what's coming into your body and your mind you're like wow is this this is good for me. This is probably not really good for me. I should probably watch some personal development instead. I should probably read a book about how to heal my life instead. I should probably do something else to feed myself better. Same thing with our phones. You know, we're grabbing our phones and we're like, my face, I barely, barely, barely scroll news feeds, my news feed. But when I do, <laughs> 95% of what comes up on my newsfeed is positive because I have a lot of positive, great, amazing, high energy people on my friends list. And so there's great quotes and there's inspiration. And so I don't mind looking at my newsfeed once in a while because I know that I'm going to find healthy things because when I have someone or, or have people that constantly post like just garbage, I'm just like unfollow. Like, yeah, I'll admit it because I don't want to see that, right? It's nothing to do with the people. It just has to do with me. I, I'm be the gatekeeper of what's coming into your body, what's coming into your mind, but what, what's around you, what's surrounding you, right? You have to be the gatekeeper. You have to be sure that what's ever coming into your mind is good, is pure, is light, is about joy. And it's not always going to happen. Like, just think about the generation now who thinks it's cool to just get totally smashed every weekend like yeah we all drank and we all hung out and whatever but we were also pretty responsible too like this generation just they grew up on Jersey Shore they grew up on real world they grew up on these shows that said that if you get drunk and you act crazy and you hook up and you just go with everybody that everything's okay and everything just have fun YOLO you only live once right stupid because these kids that have watched this now, that's the lives that they're living because that's what they've seen. That's what they think is okay. So it's the same thing. Just because you're an adult, don't think that it doesn't affect you. Don't think that if you sit there and you watch a drama show where husbands are cheating on their wives and, and people are going behind backs that you're not going to start to get that in the back of your head. Like, oh, is my husband cheating? Is my husband? Maybe he's up to no good and blah, blah, blah. And, and the drama and the fighting and the yelling. Like, usually there's a reflection in your life of what you're watching too. So... Be the gatekeeper of that. Know that what you watch and what you take in subconsciously, it's there. It's going to stay in your mind. It's always going to be there. Hey, Anita, that's why I'm watching you. Aw, thanks, Anita. Thank you, thank you. So that's what it is, right? It, it's making that choice when you're going to scroll, when you're going to watch TV, when you're going to, you know, even the radio. Like sometimes I get into my car and like Dom's been in there before me and the radio's on and like for the first like five minutes or so I'm listening to some radio show or it's just stupidity it's just nothing nothing that makes me feel like wow this is how I want to start my day right when I get in my car like I'm putting on personal development I'm putting on Tony Robbins I'm putting on people that are it's Jim Rohn I'm putting on people that are inspiring me I'm putting on things that make me feel good that make me want to take over the day things that that make me feel positive things that may I can bring all of this to you because I choose those things instead of the TV because I've detoxed my life of people that that no longer serve me. I've 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 gotten rid of anything, people, situations, um, watching things, and anything that that doesn't 
serve like just that's it that doesn't serve me you know and and I've had the conversation with with people if there's been issues and I said you know this is bothering me or this is the situation and either we fix it or, or they got out of my life there was really those two options right I keep a very small circle because I'm not about quantity I'm about quality right quality is always going to be more important than quantity so if you're one of those people that doesn't want to break free of, of all these friends and all of these events and all these things like you got to look within and be like okay yeah I got all these people but are they good people are they living from life are they living from love are they coming to events and, and are we talking about the future and all the great things we're going to do or are, are we gossiping or are we judging or are we having conversations that don't serve right or, or you're home at night and you're, you put the tv on choose something different choose something different that's good that's night like i can't, i like when my mom comes because we watch like all those like stupid silly romantic stuff that i would never watch by myself and dom would never sit there with and even me like i don't really like it but Sometimes I watch, I'm like, oh, like, that's sweet, that's cute, that's so romantic. Like, it, it builds that up in me. But when you watch things that are, are drama and anger and all those things, like, that doesn't happen, right? So, please reward the video watch every now and then. Thank you, Crystal. Well, you can, once it's done, it goes uploaded, and then you can, you can watch it whenever you want. And then also on my videos, um, I think if you go to my profile, and then you go to more, and then you go to videos, there's a bunch of videos that I've done on there, so. Amy! Daniela! Hey, Daniela! Quality, not quantity. That's it. That's it. Qu Listen, to have a lot of something doesn't doesn't really impress me. <laughs> you know, if people have, oh, I have 25 friends that I, you know, invited to the party. It's like, yeah, but how many of those friends are you going to call at four in the morning when you're in the emergency room? And how many of those are going to show up? Right? That's, that's who I want. That's, that's who I want. Like the people that are going to have my back, the people that I know are always going to be there for me and vice versa. I'll be there just as much. Those are the people that, that you want in your life. Those are the people, people that you don't have to watch what you say. People that you don't have to, oh, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Like if you're walking through, let me tell you something. If you are walking through life worried all the time about what everyone else is going to say, what everyone else is going to think, how everyone else is going to interpret the decisions that you make, please stop. Just please stop. And I know, I know that it can be hard, right? Because one of the biggest fears that's instilled in us, just it's just there, it's primitive, is the fear of being rejected, the fear of being exiled, the fear of being excommunicated or something. I don't know, whatever it is. But what did that mean, right? If you were in a tribe, if you were in medieval times and, and you were exiled and they said, you are no longer allowed here anymore, you didn't have shelter, you didn't have food, you didn't have family, you didn't have anything. So it's in our innate fear that we want to always keep everybody close to us and we want to make sure that, that we're accepted and we want to make sure that, that we're part of a tribe because if we're not, then we don't have the things we need. And the truth is, is that Yes, you do need a tribe, but you need a freaking badass tribe, right? You need people that are around you that light you up, that set you on fire, that want the best for you, that want the best for you. You know, I, I think about even in my life, people that I've shared things with when I started the business, when I've started things, and, and they've just been so negative and why well, you know, you're not gonna succeed and you're not gonna be this and, and that's stupid and oh what do you think? You're better than people? Like shut up, right? <laughs> like I can come to that point now where I'm like, dude, whatever. Like you can think what you wanna think and, and how do you get there? You get there by understanding that People judge you and people have their, their mindsets based on who they think you are, based on their lives, based on what they think. Are you going to let what other people think and what other th people feel determine how you live your life? It's toxic. It's toxic to live your life based on pleasing everyone else, based on pleasing the generations that have come before you. We're living in a different time. See, people that lived... 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, that I want to tell you how to do things now. This is 2017. Things change, okay? Things evolve. That's the beauty of our human race, of our earth, of our energy, is that we evolve and we change and we can go either way. We can, we can sucker down into who we used to be and hold on to the past and try to stay there and kill ourselves about it. Or we can grow and we can change and we can evolve and we can get better and we can improve. 
And that's the difference. That's the difference between, I think, people that are awake and people that are, are trying to change and people that are reaching out to me and being like, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to use what you're teaching. I'm ready to, to, to change my life. I'm ready to get down to the nitty gritty of what it is that's keeping me stuck of where I am because I know that it's not me. I know that all the things I feel, all the feelings, I'm, all the things I say to myself every day, right? To get tox, getting detox is also stopping your mind from all the garbage shit that you tell yourself. You're telling yourself so much garbage all day long, all day long. Like sometimes I just listen to people, like we're having a conversation. I just listen. I just listen. That's all I do. And I just hear like these like negative things and, and, and these thoughts and these statements that, that people say that declare who they are and declare their, their, their identity. And it's like, you can change, you can change, you can change. Like people, when people don't change, people freaking change. You just got to know what you need to change in order to change. People change all the time. You can shift. You can be a different identity than you are right now. You can have a different life than you have right now. But what are you focused on? Who are you letting into your life? What kind of things are you letting come into your mind every single day? You know, so many people, um, the scroll, like, oh my God, like it drives me crazy because when I'm in a public place and I see people and there's just mindlessly like mindlessly scrolling right and we all do it like I've done it I've, I've limited myself I've been aware that that I've done that and that's a toxic action right there's also toxic actions that we're doing if you add it up all the time that you're scrolling and scrolling and scroll up oh, there's a picture oh let me see let me make a judgment let me make a judgment oh yeah she's too skinny she's too fat he's too this he's not cute oh my god they went there why'd they go like it's a chatter of all these kinds, because you have this gossip inside of your head. you got to stop that, too. Look without judgment. Look without making a decision about anything. <gasps> Don't tell me you lost volume! No! Laura says she lost volume. Can you guys hear me? Somebody give me something. That would really suck if you guys can't hear me. But it happens. Somebody, somebody let me know, please. I'll drink my detox drink. Yes, you can hear me. Yes, you can hear me. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay. Laura, looks like it's just you, Laura. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes that happens. Um, so that's it. Oh, I always get on my rampage. Sorry, guys. So, so that's it, right? You're walking into your life. I say right a lot, but whatever. I don't care. Because, again, it's me. That's who I am. So I want you all to do that. I want you to go out to your lives and, and, and start evaluating your, your, your group, your, your tribe, your family, your friends, your relationships, what you're watching, what you're doing, and saying, is this making me better? Do I feel good? Right? Because that's what a detox is. A detox is removal of toxins. And what happens when you detox? If anyone has detox, they know that first you feel like shit. You feel shitty because all the shit comes up, right? All the things, excuse me, speaking of, all of the things that you're trying to get out, they come to the surface. And so that's what's going to happen in your life is you're, you know, you are going to maybe try to talk to people and say, you know, listen, I'm, I'm trying to make some changes in my life. And I just, I don't want to talk about negativity anymore. And I don't want to gossip about this anymore. And I really don't want to be judgmental or be judged anymore. And, and people are going to lose their shit because they're gonna be like, whoa, 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 who do you think you are making a change and trying to be happy in your life? <laughs> How are you to start doing that? That's what people say. It's because misery loves company. And because this idea that life is miserable and life is hard and life is difficult and everybody has money problems. And, and you know, Dom told me, I think, yesterday or the day before that, 78% of people are living, or 73 or 78%, he read an article, are living paycheck to paycheck. That says a lot. That doesn't say a lot about the economy because there are people out there who are making money. Okay, and who are not living paycheck to paycheck. So it's possible. But are you looking for the solution? Are you focused on what you have to do? Are you detoxing your life of all the people that tell you it's really hard? It's really hard. It's really hard. Oh, it's so hard. You, you can't survive here. You can't do that. You need at least X amount of money to do this and do that. You got to look at your means too. Are you living below or above your means? Are you spending more than you should be spending? That's a whole other thing. But all I'm saying is, is that you have to be sure that what you're taking in and what you hear 
you evaluate it first. It comes in and it's an evaluation and it doesn't have to be taken in as yourself. Is this toxic? Is this healthy? Just like when you make decisions with food. Here's a piece of cake in front of you. Hmm, okay, I have goals. I know that I'm gonna be further away from my goal if I have this piece of cake. And you know what? It's not that I can't have this, it's that I don't want this because it's not gonna serve me. It's not gonna be good for me. It's toxic, I want this instead. And then you have that and then you feel better. Somebody comes to you, wants to have a conversation, wants to talk about, you know, garbage, wants to talk about stuff that you really don't care about, things that, and you're just listening because you have to listen, you stop and you say, listen, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something else that's good. You have to be the light. You have to be the change. You have to be the one that, that guides a conversation, that guides a situation and, and, and assessing whether something's toxic or not. If you're not doing that and you're just going along with it and you're asleep and you're just like, oh, but what I mean by asleep is you're not aware, you're not conscious of what's going on around you, you're gonna be unhappy. You're gonna have anxiety. You're gonna feel sad more than you feel happy. You're gonna beat yourself up. Why aren't I where I'm supposed to be? Why is life so difficult? Why am I stuck? I got here, now what? You're gonna have all these, these negative conversations with yourself. So, Get on some personal development. Put on YouTube. Feel free to message me. Ask me for anything that, that might be good for you. Or, I mean, I listen to so much stuff. Read. Read. Pick up a book. Right? Instead of scrolling and sitting on Facebook and, and scrolling, like pick up a book that's going to help you to improve your life. Watch something that's going to help you to get better. Okay? Getting better is about growing. It's about growth. It's about expansion. And you want to surround yourself in every aspect, what you hear, what you see, what you speak about, what you think, with things that are positive. If you're waking up in the morning and the first thing you're doing is scrolling your phone, you already shot your day down. I'm telling you right now. Wake up, listen to some personal development. Wake up, read a freaking chapter of a personal development book. Wake up, say a nice gratitude prayer. Wake up, get a workout in. Get a, Wake up, start journaling. I'm all about the miracle morning. Every client I work with, everyone I talk to, you have to have a ritual. It's the detox for the day. It's the detox of your life. So I hope this helps. Went a little longer. Wow, I really went long. And people are still here, so that's nice. So if you feel like this helped you, let me know. Give me some thumbs up. Share it, share it with people you never know who needs this. You never know who's struggling, who's going through things and wants to get rid of it and detox. Be conscious of what serves you and others. You're welcome, Anita. You are very welcome. So share away, and hopefully this helps you guys tonight. And um, that's it. So I'm going to go. Thank you. Ooh, nice. Lots of love. Lenny. All right. So I'm going to get off. I could honestly just hang out here all night, but I got to go. So, all right. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.